Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are at this moment, and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here to this place of memory and hope where we share our joys and our struggles in our quest for what is good and true. As Unitarian Universalists, we affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of all people and the interdependence of all life. We come together to learn from each other and we draw inspiration from many sources to work together to build communities of greater justice and compassion. Welcome to this online video worship service for August 29th. I'm Rebecca Howard, and I am a worship associate for this congregation. Our minister, the Reverend John Cullinan, is on sabbatical, and we are hearing from a wonderful array of guest speakers until his return. Today, I am delighted to introduce our guest speaker, the Reverend Sonia Sukalski, who will share with us a way to marry the inevitable grief and loss that change brings with learning, growth, and the intangible gifts we usually uncover in challenging times. Reverend Sukalski grew up in Los Alamos. She went away to Sweden and Rice University after high school and returned with her mate Mitch to raise their twins, Sierra and Cheyenne, until she left for seminary in 2003. Sonia served several congregations as sabbatical minister in Northern California and started the Spiritual Activist Leadership Training, which is now Spiritual Activist Leading Together, acronym SALT, with the help of young adults across California from 2009 to 2013. She served the UU Fellowship of Tuolumne County most recently and greatly enjoyed being the closest congregation to Yosemite as she explored the Sierra Nevada over the past decade. During the pandemic, she served as sabbatical minister for the UUs in Chico last fall, and now is taking her own sabbatical. Welcome, Reverend Sonia, and welcome to all of you.
Our chalice lighting this morning comes from Spilling the Light by Reverend Teresa Inez Soto. Some people are used to keeping the rules. Don't cross the street when the light is red. Only sensible. It turns out that keeping the rules isn't the same as keeping covenant, which asks us, instead of keeping a bright line, to keep our promises. To what have we promised ourselves? To this moment in time and place? To this community? And even tenderly interconnected? This planet? We promise ourselves to the idea that we are each and all human beings. We promise that there is something moving between us that we cannot tame and cannot measure. The chalice is a reminder that what flame we keep inside us cannot light the way. The light must spill to shine. The thing you must be is yourself, unadulterated, shedding the willingness to journey alone, as though you are made up of something hard and unforgivable. You are human. You belong right here and now. And together, we will chase away the sickness, the secrets, and leave only the open possibility that the future is a space for growth. One of the things we are talking about today is creative resilience. Our opening song by the band OCBC, OCBSA, the band OCBSA, called Woyaya, does one thing that children are especially good at, playing with sounds. Woyaya loosely means we are going in the West African Ghanaian language ga. Lots of music in America is based on jazz, which was highly influenced by African music. And the kind of vocalizing that this song does is just that, playing with the sounds, which have been variously pronounced as Wayaya, Wiyayala, Wayalalai. As we sing this song, since your microphones are off, I encourage you to play with the sounds and make your own sounds as you like. The mood of this song is meant to be encouraging and affirming. So let your own being play a bit as we sing. Through sound, movement, or even just in your imagination.
The words of our affirmation remind us why we come together each week and of the promises we make to each other and to the wider world. In that awareness, I invite you to join in speaking our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church, the quest for truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve life in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony, thus do we covenant with each and with all. Virtual candles have been lit this week for Jerry Moore, father-in-law, and Henry Butler, father of Nyla Butler Moore. Both are facing serious health issues and life changes as a result. May we hold them all in our hearts. Our own lives may hold tears of sorrow and loss, as well as songs of joy and hope. We all experience times of frustration and anxiety, uncertainty, fear, and personal struggles. And yet, a beautiful late summer day, the taste of a ripe peach, or the smile of a stranger, all connect us to everything that is real and remind us that hope and beauty are as real as pain and loss. As candles burn in our sanctuary, let us take a moment now to bring to our minds and hearts whatever joys and sorrows, endings and beginnings, pain and beauty, we carry with us this day. In a time of shared silence, may we remember that there is strength within us. There are friends beside us, and there is love all around us. This body-centered meditation and practice comes from Resma Manikam's My Grandmother's Hands. Take a moment to ground yourself in your body. Feel the air coming in through your nose and your mouth on the back of your throat, your lungs filling, perhaps your chest raising, maybe you're relaxed enough to feel your diaphragm lowering as your lungs fill, the warmth of the air as it comes out of your body, feel your feet on the floor. Take some time to uncross your legs and arms if they're crossed. Feel yourself supported in your seat, your arms and shoulders supported so you can relax your neck and shoulders. So your ears and your head Float a little bit, if they feel like it. Notice the feel of your clothes on your body. And do a little body scan, starting from the top of your head, down through your face and neck. arms, trunk, legs, and feet. Do you notice 
a place where there is hope? Where is it? Maybe it's a sense of spaciousness or warmth, brightness, light, a light feeling. Where do you feel it in your body? What other words would you attach to this experience of hope? Is it as big as your pinky's fingernail? Is it a whole limb? Is it a pinprick of light somewhere in your chest? A sense of relaxation between your brows? Is it a release or an expansion? Perhaps a tightening born of eagerness or anticipation? And what hopes accompany these sensations in your body? Would it be a chance to heal? To be free of some kind of burden or trauma? To live a bigger, deeper life? Know that you can come back to this sensation, back to this word or story, And then, is there a place where you experience fear in your body? If so, where is that? And how does it manifest? Is it a tightness? Do you have a place in your body that's tighter than others? Does it radiate or is it dead and numb, a hard spot? Are there fears that accompany that spot? Are you afraid of things you can't predict that it will be different? Are you afraid of pain? Are you worried about something? Do you feel the raw, wordless fear or perhaps excitement that heralds change? Are there pictures or images? that come to mind as you experience this. Know that you can be supported in exploring this sensation. There are somatic healers who know how to work with it, who can help you work with it as well as the hope that you've experienced, that your body has a key, has many keys to healing, to creating a better place in the world for everyone, including you. Take a moment 
to notice your breath again. To breathe and direct that breath into that place of hope. to breathe and direct that breath into the fear or constriction or numb spot. Take one more moment just to be with your breath. Bless it be. Our children's story this morning comes from the book Kindness, a treasury of Buddhist wisdom for both children and parents. There's a treasury full of jade and jewels. It is in you. Don't go searching far from home for it. It's here. This is called the party. Once, the Buddha was meditating in a forest under a tree, just outside the city of Benares. This is the picture that goes with it. On that particular day, a large party of 30 princes and their royal companions picnicked nearby. Several hours into the party, a number of the guests discovered that their money and their jewelry had been stolen while they amused themselves swimming. When all the guests had been counted, they found one person missing, the obvious thief. Having had more than their fair share of liquor during lunch, the men grew quite rowdy and restless. With noisy debate, they determined to catch the thief at any cost. Off they set in a fury through the forest, crashing through the brush with bold threats of revenge upon the thief. Suddenly, they burst upon the spot where the Buddha quietly sat peacefully. Have you seen anyone sneaking around in these woods? bellowed one of the princes. There's a thief on the loose nearby. The Buddha didn't respond. Instead, he calmly asked about their situation. One after another, breathlessly explained the story of the picnic, the jewels, the money, and the thief. As they retold their story, they worked themselves up into a frenzy again. Let's go, cried a young man. The thief is getting further and further away from here. No one's going to get away with this, shouted another, shaking his fist at the air. But the Buddha suddenly interrupted the growing brawl. What do you suppose, young men? What do you think? Which is better for you, the Buddha inquired, 
to search after a thief and a few jewels or to search after yourselves? Is there not a jewel within you that you should attend to? The young princes stammered and looked sheepishly about. A hush fell over the group as they thought over the Buddha's words. Then one of the princes bowed slowly and respectfully toward the Buddha and whispered, Thank you, sir. He turned around and the others <clears throat> followed close behind him back to the picnic ground and then quietly homeward. Our reading today is by Robin Tanner. It is titled, A Blessing for Risk Takers and Failures. Today, we share in a blessing for losers, risk takers, and failures far and wide. Blessed are they who fall in the mud, who jump with gusto and rip the pants, who skin the elbows and bruise the ego, for they shall know the sweetness of risk. Blessed are they who make giant mistakes, whose intentions are good, but impact has injured, who know the hot sense of regret and ask for mercy, for their hearts will know the gift of forgiveness. Blessed are they who have seen a D or an F or a C or any letter less than perfect, who are painfully aware with the red pen and the labels as less than for they know the wisdom of the imperfect. Blessed are they who try again, who dust off, who wash up, and extend the wish for peace, who return to sites of failure, who are dogged in their pursuit, for they will discover the secret to dreams. Blessed are they who refuse to listen to the naysayers, for their hearts will be houses of hope. Blessed are they who see beyond the surface of another, for they will be able to delight in the gift of compassion. Blessed are they who stop running the race to help a fellow traveler, who pick up the fallen, who stop for injured life, for they shall know the kindness of strangers.
What a roller coaster we've been on lately. For me, the ups have been being able to get vaccinated, having boosters on the horizon, um, simple joys, seeing family and friends, wishing them a happy birthday, gardening and being able to eat the benefits of our labor. And then there are the downs. There are so many that I hesitate to list them, fearing that I'll leave one out that's really important, or maybe that has happened in between uh, taping this and when you see it. I imagine, if you're like me, there are a couple of those downers that are um, pervasive, that they keep coming up. For me, they keep coming up maybe even in the middle of the night over and over. And so consider now what is that pervasive thing that keeps coming up and how you might lay it down or give it a rest, maybe share the burden with someone else who you trust or desensitize it in some way. Because that trigger actually holds the key to your resilience. And there are so many downs happening constantly around us that it can be really overwhelming. I know a lot of us have lost loved ones either to COVID or to violence or to the stresses and strains and pressures that build up and then it's hard to figure out how to deal with. Sometimes they seem to come on a conveyor belt faster than we can process. There's so much to grieve. The huge losses around the world to COVID, the wasted resources our government could be putting toward everyone's health care, children, fighting for their lives, hospitals too overwhelmed to treat them. There are terrors in many pockets in our lives. And for all, for all these losses from the personal to the universal, we need to build our resilience to engage and process them. We need each other to help process that grief. Personally, I need the joking and good humor that my spouse seems to have so effortlessly. I need the reality check my siblings give on our parents' aging process. I need that sense of play and being in the moment that my little toddler loves and nephews and, and friends have in every moment. I even need the efforts of my mail carrier and all the delivery people who make life workable in these days. I need the people who make music, who write songs about our human condition, and the people who just get up and dance because we all need to move all these things through our bodies. I know it's really hard not to be in a room together still. And yet, much of the way I have needed to be with people has been largely satisf satisfied by technology in the past few years. And so I'm great for the, those people like my spouse who keep it running and make improvements to it every day. So given all that has led up to this moment, how do we go forward with more creativity and more resilience? I've been asking my question, myself this question for a long time, and more intentionally this past year as I worked with my colleague and friend Stephanie Etzbach-Dale on a month-long virtual retreat for grief and growth. We later worked with a pastoral care team locally, also virtually, just to help them process all the COVID deaths that happened in their congregation and all the other things that happened as a, as a result of this pandemic. 
And there are tons of resources for being and becoming more resilient. I've been a medita- using a meditation app called Headspace. It helps with meditation and sleep and even movement. I've been using the meditations and exercises in my grandmother's hands by Resma Menachem. I have been looking at family systems and even been working with a nutritionist. Think about all those things that you do to be more creative and more resilient. Because this 56-year-old knows there are always things that could be worked on. Nutrition, sleep, exercise, and those things could actually help if COVID comes into our household. I hope it hasn't come into yours. So what I am saying is we need as a, as a whole to stop and really look at ways to get better at dealing with fear, with those things we lament, with grief, and with things that trigger us. Doing this is like peeling back the layers of an onion. And when I figure out one fear I can face head on today, um, I can desensitize it and feel better and better about how things are going rather than more and more weighed down and stressed and overwhelmed. For me, those things that I fear and lament often come up at night. So there are techniques for training my psyche not to let this ruin my sleep or send me chasing my tail for years. Things like counting backwards from 10,000 when I wake up at night to get my mind out of that mental loop. Or a technique of meditation that Frank Rogers uses in his book called Practicing Compassion. This book builds as you read it, and it's been helpful for creating compassion for others and for myself over the years. I think about his two perspectives in this book, Practicing Compassion, as analogous to packing a parachute and then using the parachute in high-stakes situations that life throws at you. As any skydiver will tell you, those careful folds and construction of a parachute are as important as pulling the cord. The the careful folds in this analogy allow your brain to relax, to really process grief, make meaning of your struggles, and give words to your understanding of what you have experienced. Every time you access your own or another's wisdom, every time you see someone take a breath and create a constructive solution to a difficulty, every time you choose to listen to your body when it needs sleep or rest or play or nutrition or movement, you are metaphorically constructing and folding this parachute. Since each trigger needs a unique response tailored to your experience, this is inherently creative work. Just as in our story, our time for all ages uh, said, there is indeed a treasury full of jade and jewels in you. Don't go searching far from home for it. It is right here. You have your own uniquely human response to life's challenges, and sometimes you just need to get the space, take a grounding breath, lift your head up, and look around for the best possible landing. And that can make all the difference. Just as jazz musicians riff off each other very much in the moment, 
but using the training and knowledge of music built over a lifetime, we can draw on our training. We can riff off each other when we're in a more creative space. Obviously, you can't make a parachute while you're in the air. So you have to take time when the ground is not rushing up at you to do those things, to cry over the people you've lost, to name the ways you're sad, you're disappointed, you're hurt, you've fallen short and wish to do better, to forgive yourself and maybe even find forgiveness for others' shortcomings and express that to them. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get a backlog of these situations. I find myself ruminating on one of them as I wake up to start the day or in the middle of the night. And so it's, I know it's time to use those tools to process, to make that parachute shoot a little bit more precisely packed. One of them is called dynamic neural retraining system. It takes the triggers and it blocks them in an embodied way and then uses affirmation and future memories and memories of good things to create this oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin wash in your body that helps you rewire your brain can be super powerful as a way to, um, when the sympathetic nervous system is high, to remember the ways you rest and digest and can equalize and even overpower those when you've learned the lessons and you're ready to move on. These practices build. In the moment, my body often knows the words then after I've used those practices to respond with more humor or words that give me a twinkle in my eye, or I can instinctively take a deep cleansing breath that helps ease the accelerator off the fight or flight instinct. Creative resilience is a way of bringing balance to my being which can just sometimes stress it out, self out at the drop of a pin. When I notice that I'm on a hair trigger, it's time to take a hot bath or put on some music that makes me chill out or ask for a hug. And then I try to build some meditation, some joy in the natural world, world like forest bathing, an experience of delicious nurturing food into every day so that I can build a reserve that can meet the moment no matter what calls, no matter how the earth shakes, no matter what kind of weird air is outside or the skies rain down or withhold their blessings. In this metaphor, packing the parachute is akin to strengthening your parasympathetic nervous system and being able to actually activate it on cue. Then when your fight, flight, freeze response is triggered and you feel like you are hurtling toward the ground, pulling the chute is analogous to marrying that rest and digest training to this new situation. It helps you know that you're, you've got a moment to think, you're not going to die, you feel pulled up toward the sun and the sky, and you can bring all your faculties to deal with the situation. At the very least, by taking an approach of reflecting on situations you wish you had negotiated differently, you are promising yourself to pull the chute. You're being you're preparing yourself to be tugged out of the present moment to see the big picture and make the best landing possible. In the words of our chalice lighting, you're promising to meet each moment with the best of your humanity.
and to be yourself. To sum up, I've shared in the notes for today's service the book My Grandmother's Hands by Resma Manikim, the Headspace app for meditation, sleep, and movement, Frank Rogers' book, Practicing Compassion. He comes out of the Claremont School for, for the Claremont School for Theology, and you can find him on the website centerforengagedcompassion.com. Since we have these responses in our bodies that make us survivors, that activate the sympathetic nervous system, which trigger us to fight, flee, and freeze, our work is to marry the lingering effects of renewal and restoration done in the quiet moments. That renewal and restoration is the meaning-making beings that we are. All beings in some way respond to stress. That part is inevitable, but the meaning that we make out of it, the ways we come back to it, the ways we nourish ourselves, the ways we take care of each other, the ways we share that we recover and heal and revive our spirits, that's what makes us uniquely human. Creative resilience is going to be unique to every person based on their upbringing and experiences, and we can learn so much from each other each and every day because we all have these systems to work with. Creative resilience is also the work of a lifetime to marry the resources we have to respond to those that tr things that trigger us. Once you figure out some of your responses, it's powerful to share what works and learn from others about their experiences. What a blessing to be with you this morning to contemplate these discoveries together as life changes in our country in a profound way. I wish you many blessings on your journey. Blessed be. Thank you, Sonia, for your wise words of hope and inspiration and reminding us that there is often something to be gained from the challenges life presents us. Next week, our speaker is the Reverend Dr. Sue Redfern Campbell. Reverend Redfern Campbell retired from active ministry in July 2018, having served UU congregations since 1985, most recently the UU Church in Las Cruces. This past year, she did a two-month sabbatical ministry for the UU Fellowship of Fairbanks, Alaska. Her theme next week will be The Power of Organization and the Organization of Power. Please join us. Because of the change in the COVID-19 situation, our church board has decided to suspend in-person Sunday services and return to online video worship only. For now, small group meetings are still allowed in church rooms that have been reserved at the church, and restrooms may be used by groups meeting outside. Children's RE is continuing mostly outside with participants wearing masks. Masks must be worn by everyone when in the building. The board is watching the COVID data very closely and hopes we can reopen soon. Meanwhile, join us online both for worship and for our virtual coffee hour. Video worship services are available beginning at 10.30 a.m. and our coffee hour starts at 11.30.
The Zoom link can be found in the email announcement sent out each week. Please continue to check our website, our Facebook page, and email announcements for opportunities to connect. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. Please sign our virtual guest book. Everyone is reminded that you can express personal joys and sorrows via our virtual prayer book. For anyone who would like to learn more about our church or to leave comments or ask questions, please contact the church office. The contact information for all of these is in the service notes below. Our offering is an opportunity to share some of what we have with the wider world. Our community partner for the month of August is the Los Alamos Family Council. Their mission is to promote emotional and social well-being through education, prevention, and counseling. To accomplish this mission, the Family Council currently runs two programs, the Counseling Center and the Youth Activity Centers. 100% of all the offering collected this month will be given to our partner. Please use the link in the service notes below or download the Givelify app and select the Unitarian Church as your gift recipient. May the offertory music lift your spirits and may what you give bring you joy. I send this flame forth to live in your hearts and spill out every day until we meet again. May it kindle compassion. May it brighten your path. May it warm communities of hope and belonging. May it thaw hearts worn from fear. And may it illuminate dignity everywhere we go.